Is there anything that you think would have been more helpful in Jesse's recovery? Because you mentioned he was on Suboxone, which is a medically or a yeah, medication assisted therapy. Um, well, you know, when I worked in Massachusetts, um, we were giving Subcade, which is the injectable Suboxone. Uh, fentanyl has changed the game. It's totally changed the face of addiction. And so the stigma around, we call it MAT, Medication Assisted Treatment, that's got to stop because fentanyl is not heroin. This is, this is a whole new beast. And so we need to talk about Suboxone, talk about Methadone, talk about Vivitrol in the same way that we talk about insulin or metformin. Mm -hmm. Uh, or digoxin for heart disease, any of those things, because there's no stigma to taking those medications. And so we need to normalize addiction as a disease. I don't mean to normalize addiction, but to treat it as a disease that requires medication to manage it the same way these other chronic diseases do. Mm -hmm. uh, the injectable suboxone, frankly, was a game changer for my patients in Massachusetts. It saved their lives. People who could not stay uh, focused on their recovery, who could not stay on that medication, were able to get an injectable once a month, mm -hmm. and they survived. Uh, there is uh, some difficulty getting it um, in other places. At the time that Jesse was sick, he was when he was grown, he was. Um, living in New Jersey, and it just wasn't available there. We also, uh, I, I can't speak for New Jersey, but we need to get to where if you need treatment for substance use, you shouldn't have to go out and use to be able to get treatment. You shouldn't have to go out and use an additional substance because you have to have poly substance. Mm -hmm. uh, that happened with Jesse where he couldn't get into a detox because he only had heroin. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, so we need to stop putting up the barriers to treatment. We need to have lower barriers to treatment. We need to be talking about MAT like it's the standard of care, which it is. Mm -hmm. In the whole world, it is the standard of care. But we have to get out of our own, uh, get our own biases out, I guess, would be a way to put it and um, normalize talking about that. Yeah, I agree, absolutely. Do you have a favorite memory that you'd like to share of Jesse? <sighs> There's so many. <laughs> Let's see. I guess the one, because he used to tease me about this all the time. So when the, the younger girls were pretty young at the time, and they were, um, taking baton classes, and we were living in White Plains, but we had to drive to Brewster or Carmel or someplace, I can't remember, to get lessons. And so Jesse was tagging along with us the one time, and he would have been probably 14 or 15. This was just when we were starting to realize there was something going on. And we were driving, and we went past this kind of scenic overview, and I said, oh, how could you look at that and not believe in God? That was his catchphrase <laughs> for about the next 14 years. Um, every time he would see something beautiful or I made a perfect pie or something like that, he'd say, oh, how can you look at that and just not believe in God? And so it was um, kind of our little, our little thing between the two of us. So, and then he'd laugh, and of course he'd wrinkle up his nose when he laughed. And that was just kind of our little inside joke. So... But, the, I mean, the other part was seeing Jesse as a dad, mm -hmm. and he, he adored little Jesse. Uh, just seeing him grown up, you know, and seeing that new role mm -hmm. with him was just, it was really pretty incredible. A gift. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything else that you would like to share about your story, Jesse's story, Jesse's life? I don't think so. I think um, I pretty much 
set everything. I just have to emphasize to keep those people that you love who are struggling, keep them as close as you can. Uh, reach out to them with as much as you can offer in a moment, knowing that it's okay to take care of you too. Um, but just don't stop loving them. Just don't stop loving them. There is always hope. There is always help. Call 1-866-832-5575 or visit healingcommunitiesstudy.org slash communities slash nysullivan.html.